Many times the reduced method of arrays gets pigeonholed into being a function that can add up or multiply all the numbers in an array. In actuality, reduce can do so much more. In this tutorial, we are going to look at a couple of examples of what is possible with reduce. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. Now earlier this year, James Sinclair posted an article on making more of the reduce method. It inspired me and I wanted to show some of the things that are possible with reduce. Now, if you haven't used the reduce method, I recommend that you watch a tutorial on its basic use first. I will link to that tutorial and to the article in the description section of this video. Now, first, here is the most common use of reduce. We have here a list of scores in an array. And if we wanna get the total of all of those numbers, Declare a variable here, we do scores.reduce. Reduce is a method of arrays, and so we use dot to access that method. And then we have to pass in a callback function. Here's our callback function. And this callback function has at least two parameters, an accumulator value and the element from the array as the reduce method iterates through the array. So each of these elements will be passed into this variable. This accumulator variable is set initially to this value. This is the value we pass in to set the accumulator value. And then it gets set to every return value. So we return 0 plus 90, and that equals 90. We return that. Get, that gets put in the accumulator value right here. And then we return 90 plus 30, that's 120. And that's how it adds those up. So this is a common use of reduce to add up all of the values in an array. But I think people get stuck on the idea that we need to return the same type of data. And that's where reduce gets pigeonholed into this single application. We can add up numbers, we can multiply numbers, as long as we have numbers in an array. Or perhaps we can, could concatenate a bunch of strings if it's an array of strings. But we get stuck on returning the same type of value. Well, let's look at a couple examples that I'll hope will change the idea there. Let's say we wanted to use reduce to find the minimum number and the maximum number and return it in some way. We could return it as an object with a min number, max number. I'm gonna choose in this example to return it as an array. An array, the array will have two numbers. The first number will be the minimum score, the second number will be the maximum score. So we should have zero as the minimum, 95 as the maximum. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna call the variable min max that will store that array and we'll set that equal to scores.reduce. And now here is where we pass in the callback function. We need, to have, we need to have two parameters, so I'm putting that in parentheses when doing an arrow function. First, the accumulator, and then the actual element from the array, which I will use score as the variable to store that. All right, now the fat arrow, and then this is what we want to do. Since we want to return an array, let's set up our array there. Now, it's going to have, as a part of it, two values. And so we can use the math.min and math.max to determine which is the lowest score and which is the largest score. But we need to compare that with something. When we're using math.min and math.max, we need to compare this score with something else. So what are we going to compare it with? Well, we will compare it with the initial value sent into the accumulator. Then each time through, we'll continue to compare it to the accumulator so that in the end, we will have the highest and the lowest number. So let's put that accumulator in first. Now, the first value is going to be the minimum. 
So as the initial value for the accumulator, let's put the highest value it could be. Since these are scores, 0 to 100, let's put 100. That way, unless every score is 100, it will easily find a value that's less than that. And we'll do the same thing with the max score. Lowest possible score is 0, so that's what we'll put there. Now, how do we get this to return what we want? Well, first off, we want to do the min. So we'll do math.min, and we need to compare two numbers. And so we'll compare the accumulator, first number. We access the first number in that array that is passed in right there. We'll compare that with the score like that. So the first time through, it's going to compare 190. And it will put 90 there. 90 will be the result. And so that will be the accumulator the next time around. And so it'll be 90 here instead of 100. Okay, now let's take care of the max number. So we'll do math.max. And this time we're going to compare it accumulator second value of that array. And we're going to compare it with the score. So the same thing is happening there. Each time through, it's computing two things. It computes this and it computes that. Then it returns it as the accumulator. So it returns it to this and then we get the next score. And that could possibly change things. And so that's how it's working. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's take a look at the min-max variable and see what we got. So I'm going to refresh here and just open up in the console and type min-max. And there are two numbers. 0 is our lowest number. 95 is the highest number. 0, 95. So using reduce, we were able to get the minimum and maximum score that is in this array. So that's one application. All right, now let me copy in another array here. This is an array of objects. And basically, I'm assuming that these are students. They have a user ID. They have a name and they have a boolean that indicates whether they pass or fail. So trying to keep this as simple as possible. Now when you have something like this, how do you access each of those objects? Well you have to cycle through, test the object, see if it's the right user ID, and then you can access the information you want. Well wouldn't it be easier if we had a student object that we could access something like this? Where we go student let me put some returns so you can see that better. Student obj dot, and then we simply used the user ID to access that user, something like that. And it would return this object. It has all the information in it. That might be an easier way to access it. Well, we can use reduce to set that up, to take this array and modify it, return an object that will allow us to access the data in that fashion. So let's look at that. So student obj is what I want to call the end results. That is what will get returned from the reduce function. And then we have students.reduce. Now for this reduce, I'm going to use a regular function because I need to use a return method for this anyway to get this to function correctly. I need to pass in accumulator and the person. Well, what's going to be the accumulator? What's going to be the initial value for the accumulator? Let's go ahead and put that in first. Since we're returning an object, we should make an empty object the initial value. Now what we want to do is we want to create an object that will have this as a property with this as its value, this as a property with the entire object as its value, 
and this is a property with the entire object as its value, okay? So we're going to need to piece things together incrementally as we loop through this. So here's how we're going to do that. We want to return an object. And what's going to be inside that object? Well, we want to include whatever is currently in the accumulator. Right now it's an empty object, but eventually it will have something in it. So we want to return that as a part of this object as well. We can use the spread operator to spread out that object so it makes it a part of this new object. If the spread operator is new to you, I'll link to a tutorial on the spread operator. It's great for working with objects and arrays. So basically what's going to happen is if the accumulator is an object, it's going to spread that out so that these properties and values get placed inside this object. Instead of having an object inside of an object, we get its properties and values inside the object. So that's what it's going to do for us. So that'll be the first part of that object. And then we want to have a property of this with the value of the object. Well, the whole object is currently in the person variable because as we iterate through that array, it's assigning each one of these to the person variable. So we can access this value by doing person.userID. However, we want the computed value. We want the computed value of this, that there. And so what we do is we put square brackets around it. That gives us the computed value. Then we do a colon, and then the value of that is simply going to be the object itself that gets passed into here. See how we're doing that? So we're grabbing this using square brackets to get the computed value. Sometimes we do this with objects when we want to access a particular property, for example and we need to compute the value in order to get the property. We use square brackets for that. This is another way to do that. So we'll get the computed value and we'll build an attribute with its value and it will be included with either an empty object or after the first time through, it will be an object that has this as the attribute and the object as the value. And so we'll build up that object with all three of these. Maybe a little bit complex, but I hope that is clear to you. If not, ask a question in the comments. All right, let's save this and just check this out. We're going to look at student object and see what we get. So we'll refresh. Notice the user ID value is now an attribute with an object as its value, attribute with an object as its value. So we can do something like student obj dot Steve H. And I can immediately get all of the information for that particular user. I could also do, go even further and just grab a particular value. So it makes it a little bit nicer for accessing the information about those users. And we can build that type of object using reduce with the spread operator and by getting the computed value of person.userID to build our new object. Now, the main thing I wanted you to get out of this is how magical reduce can be. It can do a lot of things. It's much more versatile than just simply adding or multiplying up numbers or putting things together. It can do so much more if we just are a little creative with our approaches. So hopefully that was helpful. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. And remember, I provide discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, there are additional benefits to certain levels. For example, you can get access to the code files I use for every tutorial at the member level. You can follow a link in the description to learn more about that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. 
If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. Also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for a complete list of tutorials and courses. Thanks for watching.